guys hope you're all doing well so I'm very excited to create this video to sit here and talk to you about these things that are on my mind today um, so I'm gonna call this I don't know what I'm gonna call it but uh, basically I have a list of makeup unpopular opinions as well as some of those things are not necessarily an unpopular opinion but a hill I have chose to die on um and <laughs> I have plenty of unpopular opinions about a lot of things in the world but this is makeup and beauty related I've been thinking about these things some of these things you already know like pet peeves things like that you already know um some of these I'm gonna be honest with you might you might be upset about my round little feathers um as Trixie Mattel would say these things will be controversial yet brief I'm gonna say them um <laughs> and I want you to um leave your opinions and comments and if you agree or disagree if you got another a hill you're dying on as far as makeup and beauty um leave it down below okay um so just a little bit of background about me in terms of where these opinions are coming from um i have been collecting makeup for about oh jeez 11 ish years um i started a youtube channel back in 2012 um i in terms of my my professional history with beauty um I actually started cosmetology school it's a voca well it was vocational with my high school when I was 14 um graduated from you know cosmetology program state board all those type of things um I loved makeup then makeup and nails were my favorite subjects I worked as a makeup artist for a while I did fashion shows I did uh, a lot of proms and weddings believe it or not I did um so I got a little bit of a background that's that's what it is now I am just exclusively a makeup enthusiast a reviewer YouTube that's my thing I wear makeup um outside of YouTube I wear full glam I usually wear either no makeup or all of it full glam outside of YouTube outside you know and that's what I do I collect I have a whole beauty room the whole thing that's me okay so that's kind of where we are with this um so some of these opinions maybe coming from a place of like an advanced makeup user because I have to call myself one um so just just let's let's do this let's do this all right so the first one is a hill um that I am going to die on and also before I start there's no rules in makeup you can wear whatever you want whatever makes you feel beautiful we know that we know that so this is my personal opinions I would never tell someone they're doing something wrong or you know try to change someone's mind about something but okay, now we ready. Number one, <sighs> bronzer is not contour. Um, contour should be cool. When you are contouring and sculpting your face, um, when you're contouring and sculpting your face, you're, you're trying to create those shadows to make your face usually appear more slimmer. Um, a bronzer is giving you that sun kissed, sun kissed, sun kissed, tanner skin look um sometimes they're glowy sometimes they're that i just feel as though if it's warm even if it's label contour if it's warm you shouldn't be contouring with it um i do know my favorite youtuber my favorite youtuber of all time emily wildy 3 she will contour with bronzers like a warmer bronzer she'll do a slight not super sculpting but like she'll do it and i think she looks beautiful when she does her makeup um but it's one of those things i will never i'm not contouring with bronzer i don't care how deep it is if it's warm we're not doing it bronzer is not contour i will die on that hill <sighs> the next one I've ra I've ranted about this to anybody who will listen I need this is just just hear me out okay if you are putting out companies if you are putting out a rainbow palette meaning it's advertised with the rainbow it's advertised like with the word rainbow it's advertised for example like pride month the 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 pride flag rainbow if you are advertising that and your marketing your advertising for a palette has the word rainbow in it if you don't have the roy g biff spectrum represented true <laughs> in your palette it ain't a rainbow palette i'm sorry you can have red orange yellow green you ain't got no blue and a rainbow. 
You don't have any of those letters. Indigo or violet. Indigo? People try to slide without having indigo. I might let it slide, but I'm still really not going to let it slide. Violet, you want to call it purple? I let, uh, okay. It's not a true violet, it's a purple. I give it to you. But if you don't have the spectrum, it's not a rainbow palette. I have plenty of examples. So, let's see. This one, I don't remember if this one is a rainbow or not a rainbow. So, this is the Live With Love palette from Morphe. This is one of their pride uh, palettes. Wonderful cause. And um, the proceeds went to, I forgot which foundation, Trevor's foundation? Anyway, it's not what this video is about. Beautiful palette. Beautiful bright colors. If I can't find a red, I f red, orange, um, I'll let that slide for yellow. You pushing it, but it's not yellow. It's it's like a peach. Um, you got a green. Um, I will send it to indigo and a violet. This is very close, but that that's that is a very questionable yellow, and it's really not yellow. It's really not. It's more orange than yellow. Um, and now, if you're advertising this palette, where and they don't have to be matte. They don't have to be matte. Um, but I am a little picky where they should be matte. Now, if it's a all glitter palette, but you have the rainbow glitter, like red, orange, yellow, whatever glitter, that's fine. It's a rainbow glitter palette. If you want to have rainbow metallics, I feel like the whole spectrum needs to be represented, or it's not a rainbow palette. Now, this palette is not called rainbow. It's not called that at all. Um, I just use this as an example. It's not called that. But again, I think the other one, since we're here, this was the, I think this was the first one. The first one. Yeah. Red, orange, yellow, ish. There's no matte blue. There's no matte. <laughs> I just, I just, I, I get it to hell I'm dying on. You guys might be fine with it. But I just, I just, I just, I look for the full spectrum in the palette. Especially if you're using a rainbow to decorate it or whatever. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Let me know how you feel about it. Okay. So, this next one is, um, this next one is for someone like me who likes to organize. And someone who likes to, like, display makeup, have different setup, different situations. I don't care how luxurious packaging is. Uh, specifically about lipstick. Let's, we're talking about lip products, I'm sorry. I don't care how luxurious it is. Max lipstick packaging is sleek and beautiful and okay, I get it. Iconic, you know. But clear, like for liquid products, clear or colored lip packaging will always be superior. When you have a lot, I do not want you to have to open up my lipstick and twist it up to see what color it is or pick it up and look at the bottom of it like you look at the bottom for the name that's something different but like some you know lipsticks have the color um everyone can't store their stuff like this visible so for um lipsticks that are all the same color tube and the name or the colors on the bottom i store them with the butt end out in my little organizer but everyone doesn't have that i love packaging like this these are the Milani lipsticks that I've been raving about. That is the color. I know it costs a little bit more money. Manufacturer, okay. That's the color or close to the color that you are going to get inside. Inside of the, of the tube. That will always, or clear with liquid stuff so you can just see what color it is. But that will always be the preferred packaging for my lip products. It's always going to be superior. Um... As pretty as these Juvia's Place looks, I mean, these are gorgeous. These are gorgeous. But I have to either store them upside down or um, open it up. Now, I know they sell MAC tops for the MAC lipsticks with a, the clear tops for MAC lipsticks. But first off, it makes it look ugly. Um, and it's like clearly not the right top that's supposed to be on them. But it just... It, that will always be superior. Some people prefer all of their makeup to look the same and like that sleek, all sleek black packaging or the Milani gold packaging. I love it. But that's just how I feel. That's just how I feel. All right. Next one. Um, okay. I do understand dry skin. 
you know, I understand that you might want something more moisturizing, more hydrating to the skin. Um, do we, I, I get it, but I, in general, I will, f I feel as though a matte face put head to head in a hypothetical competition will always, always look better than a dewy face. I think dew can look beautiful um and like in a specific look but like i just think i think dewy if you're a matte you're matte it's either you're matte or you're not there's like natural matte or soft matte but either you're you're basically matte or you're not like dewy is like are you dewy are you oily are you sweating where does the dew end and the how do you really mm, mm, it's very finicky i just feel as though a matte face will always be superior like i said with the drier skin there's definitely um great makeup starts with great skincare so if we get our skincare routine together to combat that dry skin um having a matte face is not you know gonna be a big deal for most people i do understand their exceptions but that's just a matte face so I was going to be, I feel like everyone can look good with a matte face. I feel like with me and a dewy look, kind of glowy, but like super dewy, I'm just going to look like a piece of chicken, piece of fried chicken. Anyway. All right. This one, I'm going to ruffle some feathers. I'm going to ruffle some feathers. Um, argue with your mama, don't argue with me. Now, I shout out to Trixie Mattel because um, she's a, Trixie Mattel is a drag queen. Um, and so I'm not talking about in that sense, like drag makeup, but I'm talking about, because I love Trixie Mattel, I'm talking about um, in everyday glam, like us glam, full glam. <sighs> Overdrawn lips never look good. They never make your lips look bigger or fuller. I don't care how many tricks I watch on Instagram, all the over the contour tricks and this and that. Overdrawn lips always look like you overdrew your lips. I've never seen a pair of overdrawn lips that looked like they were not overdrawn lips. I'm sorry. I understand wanting bigger lips. I understand, you know, getting lip fillers. That's fine. Whatever. But to just overdraw, I'm sorry. It never looks good. Never looks... Like, there's artistic looks I've seen, but, like, to try to make your lips... The, the hacks to overdraw to make them look bigger never look. No. Never does. It never does. Just saying. Argue with your mama to argue with me. Okay, the next one. This one... Okay, I think, I think, hear me out, ooh, see my forehead's a little oily, let me just pat that, I think that your eyebrows look better when they're filled in with a slightly different shade than your hair color. I don't think your brows and your hair have to match. There are very few, very few hair colors that I think it works. Like if you're a brunette, um, it works, but I think that's about it. If you're blonde, obviously we don't want blonde brows. If you're blonde, your brows are gonna be a little darker. I feel as though if you're brown, like me, and whether your hair is darker or what, I think you would, people look better with dark brown brows instead of black brows, even if your hair is black. I don't think your brows, I, your brows and your hair can match, but I think it looks better when they're a little bit different. I just do. I do. Um, I also have a thing about black eyebrows, if your hair is not black. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. My, one of my, um, was one of my aunts? This was years ago. And she was like, I only use black for my eyebrows. And I was like, why? And she was like, I thought that's what you're supposed to use. <laughs> I was like, no. Anyway. All right, um, I'm gonna save that one for last. Okay, next one. Um, this one is more definitely these two. I'm put these two together. Um, it's neutrals, like palettes. Neutral, they're not boring, and they will always be popular. And the reason why this one is in here, this is coming from an influencer standpoint. I am in the beauty community in terms of the digital beauty community, the Instagram community, the beauty Reddit community, the YouTube community, okay? 
I am in a community where most of the people in that community have exuberant amounts of makeup, have are makeup collectors and enthusiasts like myself and influencers. So I am in that that sphere. I'm in that. And a lot of times in that sphere, it can become an echo chamber, but in that sphere, when a neutral palette comes out, most of the time, the top comments and responses is, who asked for this? Another neutral palette? Well, guess what? While the beauty community is big and the beauty community is loud, it is not representative of all of normal average beauty consumers. The average person wearing makeup is looking for a neutral palette. Neutral, soft, I'm talking naked palette. That's why the naked palette was so popular. Naked palette, Lorac Pro palette, where they have pretty colors in them, like a blue and a green, but they're muted or they're not, they're not this okay the average makeup consumer uh is looking for pretty neutrals of all ages of all ages not saying there aren't people out there with bright for looking for bright palettes but that's not the average consumer that is not the average consumer of Lorac or urban decay or clinique or the brands that are long standing or lancome or estee lauder or Mac, if you will. They're not, the average consumer is not looking for the rainbow. They're not. So when people say, who asked for this? Literally everyone. <laughs> Just not us, because most people don't have a million neutral palettes already. Okay? We are not, we are not the average consumer. We are not the consumer base that the brand is trying to target with their marketing and with their products. We are not. Because guess what? We gonna buy it anyway, or they gonna send it to us in PR. We're we're not, you know, because we gonna review it or we gonna do whatever. That the rest of the world that's that's buying makeup, the rest of the world that's wearing makeup on a daily basis to work to whatever to whatever, those neutrals are where it is. That's where it is. Just saying. All right, <clears throat> my list here. All right. So the next one, next to the last one. If you wear eyeshadow, if you're wearing eyeshadow, whether it's simple, whether it's three colors, one color, whatever, 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 and you wear face makeup, some people don't wear face makeup, eyes, doing your eyes before your face is the best method. It's the best order to do your makeup. I, <laughs> I think it should be brows, eye look. At least the top part of your eye look, because I get putting your concealer doing that, then maybe smudging some shadow, but brows, eye look, and then your face, and then your lips. I do not know how people function by doing their face first and then their eyeshadow. It's just you're gambling. You're, you're rolling the dice. And everyone's not heavy-handed like me. Everyone doesn't do that many eye, that, uh, that many, um... That, that many use that many shadows, but even if you just do mascara, what if your mascara smudges and you got white with Q-tip and your concealer comes? I just, um, I just, I also don't know how people do their entire eye look and then do their eyebrows. Where are we? Who are these sorcerers? Eyes before face, always. Well, unless you don't put anything on your eyes, then you're not doing your eyes at all. But let me know what you do. Let me know what you do. Let me know. Okay. And then finally, this one, um, again, might ruffle some feathers, but... Okay. We talk about... I try to not talk about it on my channel, but, like, we are aware of, like, different controversies with different brands, who we want to support, who we don't support. Um, I personally have stopped buying from certain brands and and... You know, things like that because of situations, and that's completely fine. Um, you stand up for what you believe in. I'm not here to talk about that. I'm not saying that's wrong. But what I'm saying is it's, it's, it's less than smart to throw out a product that you've already bought because of a controversy. Not a controversy in like ingredients or mold, but a controversy with the owner or with the brand and you don't want to support them. You've already bought it. Now I do understand if you're an influencer, if you are an influencer, um, if you don't want to show it on camera, I get that. Or you don't want to, yeah, promote it. That makes sense to me. But, you know, I see comments and different, because like different like Discord servers and red subreddits and different things. Like these are average people. They're not influencers. It's like, yeah, <sighs> I want to throw this. I'm, I, I threw all my X 
cosmetics in the trash. I love them, but I can't support them anymore. And I get it. And, and it, could, it could elicit negative memories and everything. I'm not telling anyone how to feel, but I don't. I don't understand that. I do understand not supporting, not further buying, not advertising, or not even, like, promoting it. Oh, that makes sense to me. But to just have this product and just throw it in the trash. Perfectly good. I don't know. Tell me what you, you, you how you feel about that. Um, is that what you do when you no longer support a brand? You throw the things that you own from that brand away? Tell me now. Uh, let me know. Um, and yeah, those are my makeup unpopular opinions and hills I'm dying on. Um, let me know what hills you're dying on in the comments. Let me know uh, any of these you agree with, disagree with, how we feel. Uh, let's let's start a big conversation about it. Um, yeah. If you have any questions, comments, concerns about anything I, sh I shared today, Y'all know what to do. Leave it down below. I love you all so, so much. And I will talk to you guys in the next one. Bye.